Now that we have learned how to calculate combined loading, we need to discuss Mohr's circle. Mohr's circle is used to find the stress along different planes. This means that if you were to look at the stress elements at a different orientation other than the main orientation, you would see different values of stresses in different directions. This is used to find the maximum planar stress values because maybe a particular orientation will have higher stresses than in other orientations. Usually this is the final step after finding the stress in a particular orientation. Break down the point in question into infinitely small square elements to properly do this. Here is an example problem. This is an infinitely small element taken from a combined loaded beam. This element has normal stress in the x direction that is compressing it with 10 kpsi, a normal stress in the y direction in tension of 5 kpsi, and it is also experiencing 2.5 kpsi of shear stress. To help us, we will draw more circle. The way we do this is we first draw an axis. Usually this is an xy axis, but in this case we are going to make it different. On what is usually the x, we will make it normal stress, and what is usually the y, we will make it shear. Notice the positive and negative orientation for each. The normal stress axis is pretty normal, it's, it's the same as your x would be, but the shear axis is the opposite what is normally positive, with the positive direction being down instead of up. Now we will plot each of the stresses on the element. If you plot the x face with its shear force, you will have a shear force that is negative and a compression face. If you plot the y face, you will have a tension in the pos and a positive shear. After plotting these points, we tend to draw a line between them. This becomes the diameter of our Mohr circle. Then we complete the circle around these points. Some important points to look for is the center of the circle, the right intersect, and the left intersect. And finally, we also want to find the maximum shear stresses. Now let's go ahead and calculate some of these points. All numbers, unless otherwise specified, are in kpsi. In order to find the center of the circle, we want to take the average of the points. So, all we need to do is take the x and y stress values and add them together and divide them by 2 and we get negative 2.5. Next, we want to calculate the radius of the circle. This, with the center, will help us find ends on either side, which results in the maximum normal stresses. If you look at this triangle here that is made by the first point and the half of the diameter and the center, we can define the height as the following points. And then in order to find the radius, it is quite simple, being just the square root of the sum of the squares. After finding the radius, we will want to calculate the principal stresses, or the sigma 1 and 2 values. These come about by just adding and subtracting the radius and the center together. These are the values that would appear on the x and y faces of stress. You should note that these points won't have any shear stress. That is always true. The principal stresses and that orientation mean that there will be no shear stress present. Next, to calculate the maximum shear stress, this would be an at another orientation. You should notice how it looks like it is 90 degrees from the orientation that the principal stresses are at. In the real world, you would only rotate the object 45 degrees. Now we want to find the orientations that we need to rotate the original shape in order for them to be at these maximum orientations. We can refer back to our triangle to help us know how to find this angle of rotation. As I mentioned, all angles of rotation are half the sizes in the real world. So in order to properly calculate that angle, we need to solve for our theta and divide it by 2. Therefore, we get this nice equation referring back to our original triangle. The process is similar for shear stress, but we need a new triangle to help us, namely this one, just flipping the side around. Then in order to solve for that orientation, all we need to do is flip the equations, and since we have had the rotate the opposite direction, we use the negative sign in the calculation. All those equations are usually provided when solving for different max stresses. All you will have to do is use them. But I decided that it would be a good idea to show where all the equations came from. Let's bring back the original stress element and look at it. This is what the principal stress element will look like when we rotate it to its particular orientation. Notice the lack of shear stresses. And this is what the max in-plane shear stress looks like, and notice that how the x and y stresses are both equal to each other, which makes sense since the max in-plane is the same point for both x and y. 